Yeah, this is amazing. <laughs> it healed the world already. Yeah, from where we are. Yeah, it's, all, it's happening. And there might be conflict, there might be war, there might be things out there. But we do our part. We do what we can and share good energy to our friends around and pray for them that may the well find peace. Thank you. So we're gonna move on to lesson two. Yeah. Uh, if you missed lesson one, ask anyone who invite you <laughs> to this program. Yeah, we, we uh, I, I think my team and especially myself, I'm super excited <laughs> that I have this moment to share this five life changing lesson I learned from my master. So this coming Friday, August 27, we celebrate his 53 years as a monk. Yeah. So I pick up this good moment to honor my teacher. And today, lesson two, one light, one humanity. Yeah. I really want to let you know that uh, the topic today that I share with you, it will resonate not only in the big scale. You know, when you talk about humanity, it means everyone, yeah, our self, our families, people at the company. Yeah, if you, you connect to all. And one, you can let them know that they have that light. They will, they will choose to be better. They will choose to be uh, more progressive because, you know, Imagine when you wake up in the morning and the sun doesn't come up, <laughs> how you feel, right? But when you see the sun shine in the morning, wow, ready to move on, ready to move to some good thing. And uh, I will show you a special video. It's like a teaser, like a trailer uh, for a special talk that I have with uh, Professor Jeffrey Sack, who taught at Columbia University and work as advisor to UN Secretary General on sustainable development. So I joined state with him in 2018 at Ruben Museum of Art in New York on the topic wisdom and sustainable world-class economist, but he interested in ancient wisdom, how ancient wisdom will fix the modern day problem. And I extend my uh, deep interest into that modern science thing and the ancient wisdom that we must become one and find a good solution. And in the trailer, you see how world-class professor and economist embrace the idea that we have that light in science that everyone will benefit. Okay, so hope you can see this video. The US is definitely going down. It's not different from the phenomenon that we're seeing of rising suicide rates, rising, rising uh, obesity, which is creating a lot of unhappiness in the society, uh, rising depressive disorders in American society. Uh, we have people die of hunger in a time that is plenty. There's a lot of excess in our society and a lot of suffering from that. You can imagine the United States has the biggest GDP on Earth, but are you satisfied? People are not happy with the excesses. When uh, you say you want a revolution, we should fix our minds instead. 
The most basic point you should understand is that these are solvable problems and they would not cost that much to solve. The truth that really transformed human being is one. It's like sun in the sky that shine to all. But in different countries, we call the sun differently. With Buddha or with Plato and Aristotle or with Confucius, the questions were about the good life. When King of Bhutan talk about gross national happiness, that we should not use GDP only to measure the progress of the nation. Will GDP growth be 3.2% next quarter? 2.7%, 3.4%, it doesn't matter for our well-being, actually. Happy people tend to make other people happy. Unhappy people tend to make other people unhappy. We're not failing because of the lack of things to do. We are failing because we're not do be doing. The middle way is the key concept of Buddha teaching, this is the way out. Okay, please. Give a big, big hand, you know. You can try number eight <laughs> if you enjoy that trailer. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's a very special day in my life. And you see, like a BT Piku. And that's my stage name <laughs> Venerable Burin B. Tita Kusalo T. Now we, we just call Mang Burin. <laughs> Yeah, um, that is interesting conversation and it's open the door that if we can go back to that ancient light that waiting for us, that humanity get more complicity and uh, you know division and let's go back to that unity that go beyond any belief system. It's like a sun in the sky. I'll explain to you more. Yeah. Can we go back to teaching? Yes. Yeah. This is one of my, like, um, I would say top three. <laughs> yeah. One of the most uh, favorite wisdom, yeah, of Mang Burin, and uh, it's so powerful, yeah. It's it's it's, it's like a ancient uh, proverb, and today I gonna expand one life, one humanity from this proverb. If there is light in the soul. There will be beauty in the person. If there is beauty in the person, there will be harmony in the house. If there is harmony in the house, there will be order in the nation. If there is order in the nation, there will be peace in the world. Wow, how was it? Simple, but very profound, right? So this is something very interesting. How one light from your soul will change the world. I experienced that before when we have a big event in the Philippines that we light up 100,000 candle in 15 minutes. <laughs> you can imagine one person is going to light 100,000 candles. How long is it going to take? But when 100,000 people light their own candle, 
just light that one candle, but they do it together. It create the largest flaming image in the world. Yeah, so you can imagine the, the light in your soul, you become more beautiful, you become more handsome. It's like a, you start from inner peace. And when you have inner peace, your family will directly benefit from it, right? Yeah, so that inner light is so important for your loved one, for your family, for your friend. And who knows when each family, each home do the same thing, the whole town can be peaceful, no violence, no conflict, right? And if the whole nation start from every family do the same thing, the whole country will be peaceful. And if every nation has that policy, it will be world peace. Yeah, coming. So I'm gonna jump quick. I'm sure if you are the middle way student, you're quite familiar with this lesson. My master yeah, told me meditation or silence is central to the teaching of all spiritual leaders. You know, today I add science <laughs> yeah, into the another belief system also. <laughs> Supreme Kunet is one, but it could be called by different name. Yeah. For Christian Christianity, they call heaven. Islam, they call paradise. Brahmanism call Brahma well. Buddhism, we call Nirvana. But if you ask the scientists, they will call that the theory of everything. <laughs> yeah, because they, Albert Einstein, Stephen Hawking, they look for one formula that will explain the whole universe, explain the whole things in the world. But to achieve that supreme goodness, to achieve the supreme goodness, we need inner goodness, like, like a world peace come from inner peace to achieve that eternal great qualities. We need our, it's like a password. So for Christianity, they said Holy Spirit. In Islam, called Allah. In Brahmanism, called Atman. In Buddhism, called Dhamma. In science, called pure consciousness you know now we have a field called neuro uh, neuroplasticity or neuroscience field that they prove it now that if you go into deep meditation or even not deep meditation but consistent week or consistent months of daily meditation it change the brain yeah it become new science that you can fix your brain. You can make yourself nicer. You can make yourself happier. And it's showing your brain. So people close their eyes. So what fixed the brain? They call it the term pure consciousness. <laughs> yeah, this is scientist's term to call that one sun in the sky. I'm so glad that now uh, spiritual teaching, science, it cross. And as I mentioned in the video, and Professor Jeffrey Sack also touched on that, that Buddha or Aristotle or Confucius share on the same big question. What is good life? Imagine we go out into uh, the field and uh, we try to understand the sun in the sky. And we're from different country. Yeah. If you're from America, you said, oh, that's the sun. So from Thailand said it Pratit. From China said it's Thai Yang. So one syllable 
uh, sun, right? Two syllable, tai yang. <laughs> Three syllable, pra atit. It's one thing. <laughs> and if anyone will say, no, no, that's sun, that's not tai yang. Or Chinese will say, no, it's not sun, it's tai yang. That's conflict. Yeah. So my master said, we are one <laughs> and no one on the sun. The sun is the sun, shy for all. Yeah, we should not fight over how to call the sun. Yeah. And this is another evidence from Pali Canon. Luminous monk is the mind. And it is defined by incoming defilement. Yeah, Buddha said when you meditate and when you get back to that silent, your mind become luminous. You know, we are like um, our especially our friend who practice the middle way meditation and know about the center that you experience that shining light. It's like a miracle, right? You close your eye, but you can feel the light. It's not a miracle. It's just another fact that the modern science still have a challenge to understand. And that's an inner sun, like the outer sun that shine for all. That is the inner sun that shine for all. It go beyond any belief system. It's the fact, it's the advanced science. And Long Pu Wat Nam, who followed the Buddha, confirmed that. That's what he said when he first encountered that inner light. My mind become more serene until it come to a standstill at a single point at the center part of my body appearing a bright sphere. The sight of the yoga and egg, steadfast and joyous at my center. Long Pu Wat Bak Nam, the founding teacher of the Middle Way Meditation, it's bright, but it's, and he said it's round. That light is round, like a yoga of an egg. You see, for that, this is amazing. And in Bible, it said by John, this is the message we have heard from him and declared to you. God is light. In him, there is no darkness at all. Yeah, Bible also talk about the light. Then there's a book called The Confession of St. Augustine. If you are Catholic, you know this book. I enter into the innermost part of myself. I enter and I saw with my soul eye. Yeah, what is that? St. Augustine, a respected saint in Christianity. He said soul eye is round, right? And what his soul eye connect is unchangeable light shining above this eye of my soul. He who knows truth know that light. He who know that light know eternity. Wow. This is a powerful message from one of the greatest sense in Christianity. Bright sphere, so I. What is that? And believe me, yeah, I have my Muslim friend send me this. Allah is the light of the heaven and the earth. A light of his light is as niche in which is a lamp. Yeah, it's round. It's a light. Light upon light. Allah guide to his light whom he please. And you, you assert the term, the universal light, you said it go beyond Buddhism, beyond Christianity, beyond Islam, in all major spiritual tradition. That spiritual leader experienced that light, that what my master said that I mentioned at the beginning, all spiritual leader, the one who step into goodness, kindness, they know that light and that light will connect humanity. I think I'm gonna jump quick on this one because time is running out. 
Now you know that life will make me a happier person, a more beautiful, handsome, <laughs> because you are happy, and that will make my family more peaceful. That will make my company more effective, even in your hometown, in the government, or in the world. How to find the light? Yeah, this is a very short lesson. Uh, I will uh, direct my uh, staff to share this uh, maybe on the chat box right now. If you can find the introduction to the Midway Meditation, please share the YouTube link yeah, in the chat box. But this is the mini version. How to find that light? Yeah, two main factors that you can find that light. Relaxation and mindfulness. That's what we did today. Relax and let go and let everything sink down to the bottom and be mindful with that state of mind. It's like what? Yeah, this is the three main to be used. Center the body, visualization and the mantra. And that is the spot, two finger width above the navel. And just be still and let everything sing down. That one light is in the glass. That glass is your body. Yeah, just, it's already there. You didn't uh, make the light. The light is already like a sunshine. If any thought, any ideas come, let them fly away like a bird. If too many birds come up, pop up something bright like this, or do the sounds of the mantra. Samarahang, samarahang. Samarang purity around mean freedom. So you can use clear and bright, any sound. And that will be a simple way to discover that light in your soul. Relax your body, focus gently at your center. Then step three, you can relax and do nothing, or you can visualize something and use the mantra. So I would like to summarize again that this one light will unite humanity. Please remember, if there is light in your soul, there will be a beauty in yourself. <laughs> if there are beauty in yourself, there'll be a harmony in your house. If there's harmony in your house and everyone's house, there'll be order in your nation. If there's order in all nations, there'll be peace in the world. Satu. Yeah. You like it? <laughs> Yeah, I hope you feel inspired that this one light is, it will help humanity and you are the first humanity, you yourself. And I hope that will make your family more harmonious and peaceful and your work in your company, in your business, that happy people will project a good result. The fact that will come up when they are happy. So thank you so much for learning. Hope you. Uh, enjoy lesson two tomorrow. Lesson three, simple but profound, will continue tomorrow. I uh, share the microphone to Angela and for our ending. But uh, thanks everyone for joining in. So grateful to have this opportunity to share this wisdom with all of you. Sad to.